One of the biggest reasons I love interviewing people is to find out what they know and what they've experienced. If you're nearing the end of your enlistment or you're near retirement, you're about to get some transition tips from people who've already done it. One of the biggest questions I get from one of the military networks that I'm a part of is how can I ensure a smooth transition? It's hard to ensure a smooth transition, but hopefully by learning some of these tips, you can make it a smoother transition than what some of us have went through in previous years. These military veterans you're about to hear from have already went through the transition. They've struggled, they have failed, which is also what has helped them succeed. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The day you enter, you should be thinking about leaving. One of the, one of the great pieces of advice that, that I heard somewhere was, um, you should always write your resignation letter on the day you start your job. Because you're <laughs> never gonna be in a better mindset. You're never gonna be more filled with like opportunity and you know, the future and all that. But it's also gonna make you reflect on the fact that no matter what you're doing, it ends. At some point, it's gonna stop. So when you think about transition and you think about leaving the service, um, I would recommend like 18 months to two years before you got to start putting, you got to spend some time in that space every day, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, LinkedIn profile, kind of looking at what you want to do and seeing other people that have done it, but you don't have to spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, just start having those conversations. And then, you know, at a year you need to get serious, right? Because that is going to fly by. If you haven't got out yet and you're listening and say you have 12 months, let's hope you do. You put away as much money as possible. And I'm talking, if you can, $1,000 a month. I mean, I know that's hard. And I know it's almost impossible for the majority of us when I was in. I, I don't think we had 50 cents to our names when my wife and I got out of the Marine Corps. Right? Serious. It was, I get it. I get it. Yep. Uh, but put that money away and start networking now. LinkedIn, LinkedIn, I'm going to say it again, LinkedIn is your key to a job where you want to go, what you want to do. Um, people that you know, reach out to them, home, friends, and, and not your sketchy friends that you saw in high school, right? Your friends who have made it or in their own business or they're working at a company that's reputable. Call them up. Give literally, hey, John, what's going on, dude? Yeah, hey, getting out in 12 months. You got anything for me? Please reach out to them because you do not want to be that, that active duty transition that last day walking out that gate and looking around and going, uh, I got no medical, I got no money, and I got to take care of a wife and three kids. What am I going to do? Right? And that's unacceptable. You don't want to be in that position. And, and I, I'm not going to speak for Brian, but I'm going to say, if you know a other veteran, somebody who got out before you, they will, uh, more than likely, they will support you in some way. Uh, I would, I would, you know, LinkedIn, link on with me, connect with me, whatever they call that thing, link, connect, whatever. I don't do Facebook. I don't do Twitter. I don't do Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. And that's where Tech for Troops, for me, I get a lot of connections where I've met Brian, right? We're, we're introduced and stuff. So that's, as you're getting out, understand it is not the same. You can wear the clothes you want to wear. You can swear up to a point, but don't use any. It's a different world. I'm just telling y'all. And and so use use who you know and then network, network, network. And if you're saying like, well, I'm just going to get out and become an IT project manager, start now. Start now and get that certification so when you get out, they're going to hire you. Keep your security clearances. Keep them, right? If you lose it, I lost mine 30 years ago, 30 years ago. I would, I wish I had kept it. Uh, I seriously, who, who knew back in 87 that a security clearance was worth $30,000 on top of the salary, right? So, yeah, your transition is going to be tough. Listen to the TAP program, whatever it is, whether the Marine Corps TAP transition uh, program, listen to them. Uh, contact me. Let me know what, what you're thinking. I'm happy to help. Hey, guys, hopefully you're getting some value from this thus far. I just wanted to reiterate two things that Steve and Mark had mentioned uh, in the first two tips, and that is uh, Steve mentioned start early. You know, day one or even prior to, to going into the military, but it also ties into what Mark had mentioned is getting yourself on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, is a very powerful tool professionally. I've met some of the best uh, business relationships and veteran relationships uh, through the pr platform that I probably wouldn't have met otherwise. Um, so just 
get yourself on the on the platform. Start connecting with uh, people that you know. Then start connecting with uh, other veterans that are in your area, geographical area of where you're going to move to when you do transition out. Uh, and if you're not sure, you know, still connect with other veterans. Other veterans want to help other veterans, just like Mark had mentioned. So get yourself on the platform. But also, you know, when you're when you are that six to 12 months out, you might want to look at uh, what LinkedIn has here. And I'm going to show this my screen here to you, but they actually offer a premium version to military veterans uh, for up to 12 months. And they have a course on here as well. And it's very simple. Just enter your information there. Uh, they will verify your military status through uh, whatever platform they use for that. And then um, also down here below, you'll see LinkedIn for Veterans. They give you a course on how to best use their platform. And then they also have a learning path from transition to, uh, from military to civilian employment. I'm not saying that this is going to solve all your problems or anything like that. However, it is a powerful tool for you to utilize uh, during that transition process. So uh, if you're not already on there, make sure you get yourself on there. And uh, let's jump right back into it. What I would recommend is find a deliberate mentor. If you're lost, what am I lost? What am I seeking? And if you don't know what you're seeking because you're that lost, who can you trust? And then keep on finding the next person because you're going to learn something from every one of those mentors that's different than the next person you talk to. And when you put them all together, they're the game changers. There's, this is a great resource for anybody out there that's in this stage of transition. There's a program called American Corporate Partners phenomenal program where essentially it's a it's a nonprofit that helps pair transitioning veterans with civilian partners right so people who are working in the civilian world right who want to be a mentor to veterans I got paired with an incredible mentor Denny Shepler Shepler uh, sorry Denny if I, I'm mispronouncing <laughs> the last name but uh, but Denny was incredible he was uh, um, the CEO of uh, a national accounting company and and he poured into me so much wisdom and so many incredible insights. And it's a, it's a year long mentorship. And so we would meet um, sometimes multiple times in a month, but I think the requirement was only to meet monthly. Um, but he, again, he just poured so much into me over that time. And um, he helped me identify what my strengths, skill sets and abilities are and what my passions were and connected with potential career aspirations. So that's awesome. ultimately helped me identify that I wanted to be in the space that I am now, knowing that I had a strength in logistics, but I wanted to be, so uh, to talk about where I am now, I, I now work for a private real estate company. So we, we essentially do real estate investments nationwide. So we're acquiring assets and raising funds to be able to acquire assets to produce a return for investors. made me think of another resource that I think people that are transitioning should definitely tap into. Um, Deloitte, which is a consulting company, but Deloitte has a program, again, for transitioning military members where they fly you out to their campus down in Dallas-Fort Worth in Texas. So they fly you out in their dime while you're still in the military. I think you have to be within the last six months of transition, similar, similar thing, or maybe the last year. Um, but they fly you out and then they put you through a four day program to where you're essentially learning how to communicate what you did in the Marine Corps or, or in the military to what a civilian can understand, a civilian employer. Sure. So they transfer the talk into civilian speak and they help you through that process. And I, so I did that program. One of my good buddies that I served with actually worked for Deloitte and he told me about it. So I want to share that information because that That's was great. an incredible program that uh, really helped me learn how to convey what I did to something that would make sense to someone in the civilian world. What do we do when we come home? And that's always, that's always kind of a, a question. So I, my, my job is I work with the state of Wisconsin. I, I run the Wisconsin's uh, apprenticeship program. And so the apprenticeship program is a tremendous opportunity for soldiers who are coming out of this very disciplined environment to come in to an apprenticeship opportunity, whether it's construction, industrial, healthcare, whatever, whatever space that they want to come into, they can come into an opportunity where they have full-time employment, 
They'll get the education that they need to tie with that employment and they're getting paid for 100 percent of that opportunity. You know, we were talking off camera right now. Our average apprentices are earning between six five and eighty five thousand dollars a year with no educational debt hanging over their head. Also, the beauty of, of the apprenticeship program is that soldiers can use their GI Bill to cover the school expense that happens throughout the apprenticeship. So when we say that there's no educational debt hanging over their head when they're done, because all that schooling is paid for throughout the apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. So you're not taking you're not necessarily taking out student loans to pay for your schooling. We use the Wisconsin Technical College system, which is very affordable uh, to provide that related instruction. And, you know, eighty five thousand dollars a year is a very sustainable wage to take care of a family, yep. you know, um, and typically soldiers that get out after they can finish their first contract, they're roughly around 26 years old, 26, 28 years old, somewhere around there, unless they went in right after high school. Um, the average apprentice age coming in is roughly around that 26, 28 years old. Mm -hmm. So they, they fit right in, you know, to, to what the successful figures are when it comes to the Wisconsin Apprenticeship Program. Try to get some trips in back and forth so you can start building that situation before you even get out permanently because you know once you're home you're home you know and i think the military does a good job at the out processing trying to uh de-soldier us but we're programmed yep. you know we're going to be soldiers for the rest of our lives whether whether we admit to it or not we the training that we receive sticks with us for the rest of our lives and so when guys when guys and ladies come home they should be trying to connect with individuals that can share in those experiences so that way they don't feel like they're on an island because there are probably going to be many a days when you come home you feel completely disconnected because think about it when you you've been gone for a while so you want to come home and reconnect with your childhood friends but they're different because you're different right it's not the same vibe it's not the same energy um, but if you connect with some of the veteran organizations you'll find people that's your age that have similar similar uh, experiences and you can still have relationships with your childhood friends, but this is a way for you to stay balanced. Sure. You know, because I think oftentimes we will find ourselves um, off balance, and I think that's what concerns our loved ones, you know, especially those who have combat experience. What advice would I give them right now is I, I'd say as soon as you make that decision that you know you're no longer going to be staying in the military, is that you have to start preparing right away. Um, and that includes your finances, that includes, um, you know, start looking for employment if that's what you're going to do, or, you know, education, start uh, connecting with your, the resources where you're going back to, um, whether that's back home from, you know, where you grew up or some other place. So those would be my initial kind of recommendations is you got to start planning as soon as you made that decision. Um, and uh, your transition will be a lot smoother if you start doing that early on. I got my opportunity when I was a, a junior in college, so I was looking for internships, and that's how I got my foot in the door, um, was through the internship program. And uh, from there, I still developed skills and you know, was working on my resume and working on uh, developing relationships within the organization. Um, so that's where I started, um, and, and that you know, helped me. Um, but I can see, and I've worked with other veterans that have transitioned with um, translating their skills and, and be able, being able to get back into the civilian world in a corporate position. Uh, but the, ultimately, the biggest thing is, you know, don't wait for somebody to come to you. Um, you have to go out and you have to search and you have to find those positions. You have to connect with those people um, because nobody's going to, you know, come tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, come work for me at this great organization. You know, you have to go find those people. Um, so, I, you know, looking back, one of the things I did, I think, um, at, at the time I didn't realize again was, you know, I, I'm very, very hyper focused on something. I go and I, I, I try and do it myself. I don't necessarily wait for somebody to come to me. You don't know what you don't know. Um, so uh, having good mentors or finding people that have forged the path in front of you is, is the best way that you can do it to try not to repeat mistakes that people have made that don't necessarily I'm a, I'm a stubborn guy and I will <laughs> keep running into a wall to try to knock it over. But again, if you don't have to make those mistakes, don't, you know, um, and again, it, it's, 
it doesn't look pretty every day. There, there's plenty of times that goes home. I, I make the joke again. I'm I'm gray from from my kids first, but work second. Um, it's not always going to be right, perfect, and things like that. There's still going to be problems. It doesn't matter. You surround yourself with the best people you possibly can, but there's still going to be issues. There's still going to be problems. There's still going to be those things, and it's how you react to it. And in, in where you're coming from um, and your goals behind that that are, are going to lead that. And again, going back to do the right thing. I mean, if you do the right thing, it'll work out in the end. And, and I'm a firm believer in that, even if that's not necessarily the thing you start off with. And, and kind of like military, failure is not the end. If you give up, that's the end. So, you know, it may not necessarily be the first thing you start with and you may have to pivot and you may have to do those things. Don't be pigeonholed into, I do this specific thing. You know, just be flexible, be willing to talk to people, take in that information and, and work it yourself that way too. Take time through the transition as you're transitioning out. There's a lot of things out there that weren't around when you and I were getting out or even way back, further back than there. And now I'm sure there's a lot different with transition because I think they've figured out that the transition process out of the military to civilian life was doing and setting the next person up for failure because you got out, it was great. You wanted to be out, I'm gonna go to the bar. Okay, that lasted a week or two. And now <laughs> it's like, I should probably get a job yeah. or I should go to school or do whatever. Uh, really take that time to figure out what your path might be. Talk to those transition officers. Hopefully when you get out of that, you have an idea of where you wanna go. Uh, whether it be, I really like this, I really like my job in the military. I didn't like my job in the military, but at least you found that out. And, and what are some other things that you may have liked or, or done? So once you get out, I would definitely try to find out who that either chamber or that transition officer or your, um, uh, I forget the acronym, but whoever's on the ground when you get, when you get there, you can find out, okay, I live in Milwaukee. Where do I go? Do you find your VA? Do you talk to you? the local um, Legion post or, or VFW post. Someone over there will know, where do I go? Intertwine yourself with veterans. Get quickly back into that. Okay, I need to lean on my people, which are the veteran community. Where do I go from there? They will definitely give you probably a good sense of where you need to go after. I mean, if someone came up to you, you and I and many others probably could tell them a list of places they want they should go yeah. that they had no idea to go to so find and cling on to a veteran organization once you get out from that point it's okay if there's a skill trade hey I'm looking to do this we know go to a veterans networking group uh, they're out there uh, it doesn't take hard long to find out or figure out where they are Mm -hmm. Secure yourself with another veteran background. If you're having trouble, those people will be able to help you. We look after our own. Those are the kind of things that still transfer over to, to what we do. And from that point, I think you grow on and grow forward. But right away, it's, it's find out, excuse me, what options are open to you. Where do I go once I get there? Once I'm here, who do I need to talk to? Excuse me, and, and, then, and then move forward with that. You know, now that I kind of think back about it, as we're kind of talking about this, I, I mean, I remember trying to transition off active duty myself. Well, there's a career fair for veterans. Well, let me go check that out. You, you go with a handful of resumes and you're in your best dress Sunday suit and you're trying to go and impress people. And, you know, career fairs are a little bit difficult, uh, the way they operate now. Um, a, lot, a lot of technology, please apply online or... We're not taking resumes right now or, you, you know, I, I think that makes it very tough and it makes that transition a little bit more frustrating. And now that I've been here at CVI, I, I would say the, the best piece of advice I can give is find a nonprofit group that has uh, good awareness and outreach and find out if they have a workforce development program. CVI does. We, we have our, what we call our Homeless Veterans Reintegration Program. And it doesn't mean you have to be homeless to come to us looking for advice, but we do have a very significant network with employers but, you know, around Milwaukee and Waukesha counties. And, and we got them elsewhere too, but our team of folks can connect veterans who are transitioning to employers who may be looking for specific jobs. Hey guys, we hope you got a ton of value out of this video. 
Um, I know there's a lot of information in here, so if you need to, go back, re-listen, take notes, um, do whatever you need to do to make sure that um, you are taking full advantage of some of the things that these guys shared. Uh, something I just wanted to piggyback off of uh, with Ed um, as far as getting in touch with you know a nonprofit in, in the area, geographical area where you're planning on transitioning out to is also get involved with a nonprofit. Um, I'll tell you, one of the best things that has ever that's happened to me was you know when I did join a nonprofit and I decided to get back involved in the community and serve is when things started to really change in my career and in my life. You know, it gave me a sense of purpose uh, again to you know get out there and do things, make myself feel uncomfortable but also have make myself feel good too. It, you know, there's nothing better than helping others and serving others. You just get that feeling inside. Um, and that's something that you should all look at doing when, when you get out, whether it's serving on a committee or getting involved with the board of directors or an advisory uh, committee or advisory board for uh, one of these nonprofits in your area. Get involved. You you don't never know who you're going to run across either. You know I've met a lot of great people uh, through that process as well um, that have helped me in my career and in my life. So definitely look into that as well and and, and you know take advantage of that opportunity um, because there's no better people in the world that I believe uh, better at serving others than our military veterans. So um, definitely look into that. I'm also going to put the links to all of our um, contributors who I also want to thank for contributing to this video. Without them, this wouldn't have happened. Uh, so thank you to all of you guys. And I'm going to put the links to all of their LinkedIn profiles below as well as their companies and uh, some of the resources that they shared. You know, Giorgio shared American Corporate Partners and uh, Deloitte. But there's also a bunch of other resources that were shared throughout the video that we'll also put in the links below. And, you know, if you guys have any feedback or comments on, on anything that was said in this video, we'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. So without further ado, if you have not already, please hit that subscribe button. We want to bring you more information just like this uh, to provide value to you. And, you know, we want to thank you for your service. This is our way of helping uh, you and, and, and pay it forward to uh, future veterans who are, who are transitioning out of the military. So certainly do appreciate you and everything you're doing for this great nation. And, uh, you know, if there's any other topics that you guys would like to hear about, put those in the comment section uh, below. And, uh, you know, check out some of the other videos on our channel. Take care, everybody. Appreciate you.